Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create and design an invitation in Photoshop so that you can sell invitations on Etsy or your own website. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is create our canvas and I do a 5x7 at 300 pixels per inch and I also design in CMYK. Once you click create you're going to have your canvas ready to go and I'm just going to leave it as a white background because I'm going to be doing a watercolor invitation and you want to go in and add your clip art. So I've already got some clip art uploaded here and just for your information I use Creative Fabrica and some Etsy shops. So there's a few Etsy shops that I will use but for the most part I use Creative Fabrica for my graphics because I have a subscription. I know what I can and cannot do and I run four Etsy shops and I don't want to get bogged down with license, licensing issues and everything. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. I'm not an affiliate at the point of recording this video. I'm just letting you know that's usually my go-to. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to place, so I'm going to double click and place this into my canvas. And I'm going to resize it because I don't want it that big. I want it about right there. We're going to move it up here and I'm going to rotate how I want it because I want it to fill this section and not let's do a little bit bigger I want to fill the section get the graphics nice and pretty uh, let's see about right there that looks good and then you're going to click this little check mark right here now what I'm going to do to duplicate it is I am on a PC I'm on a Windows 10 and I just click alt and drag it and then I'm gonna go to edit transform flip horizontal edit transform flip vertical and I'm just gonna move it to match the top part okay and then once I get this done and we're ready to go and that one just okay there we go once I have that good, it's matching, it's ready to go, I want to click on my top layer and then we're going to go to your text tool. I'm going to go ahead and do my regular serif font first. I'm going to do 12 point font and go ahead and make a box. And I like to do the regular text in all caps and then I will do my script font in just regular punctuation. But we're going to type in please join us for a baby shower in honor of I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark and let's go ahead and center this up I'll go to edit free transform so that I, there we go so that I can see my center and then I'm going to go back to my text tool I'm going to change the font and let's go here's one I like to use oh Hold on, let me undo that. Let me go ahead and draw my box and then change it so it's not trying to change the other. Let's go back to Hello My Love. And we're going to change the size to about 48. We can adjust that once we get it done. And we're going to do Elizabeth Rose. Go ahead and click OK. And my punctuation here is not good. Sorry guys, it is a little late where I am at. The babe is in the bed. So let's get going here. And I feel like this needs to be bigger. And because I know I'm not going to have a lot of text that just go from top to bottom, and I like my invitations to look full, we're actually going to drop the rows down to a second line. And if you don't like that, you know, you can always do it however you want to do it. But I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to bump up the size a little bit. There we go. I know that the text might look a little pixelated. I can't tell if it looks pixelated on your end or not, but it will not come out that way once you save it. And we're going to free transform. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to click back on my please join us layer and I'm going to hold down alt. And I'm going to drag it again so I have another text box. And we also want to get the same amount of space in between 
the top right here and the bottom right here. And I feel like that doesn't look quite how I want it. I might end up moving that up a little bit. Okay, so let's go in. I'm just clicking my, my font right here. And let's type in information. So we need our details. So we'll just put Saturday. I just do generic details for this for my mock-up. And then I'll copy and paste once I get the customer's information. Or that's how I used to do it. I actually use a different software now. But this is just in case you're wanting to charge a little bit more. And you want to take the time to edit the imitations instead of the customer editing. So let's go ahead and put in our details. We'll do June the 1st. 2021 at 2pm. going to press enter to do another layer. We're just going to go the Rose Residence. I just tend to do the last the last name and then the residence or if I'm doing fairy tale, I'll do the Enchanted Castle or the Enchanted Forest, you know, so on and so forth to go with the theme. And then I just put 123 Street and then City State you can put a fake address. I just prefer to leave it like that so it doesn't have any, you don't have any issues with customers getting information. I used to use my information. I wouldn't do my, my actual address or my phone number, but I would do, you know, places I had lived before and things like that and just do city state without the actual street address and it just made me feel kind of uncomfortable and I didn't like seeing my name on all the invitations. So I figured, you know what? let's not do that let's just do gen generic stuff so I'm gonna do so what I did was I just did enter twice I'm gonna do an RSVP line to Elizabeth and then I just do zeros for the phone number until you get their information and you want to do by we'll do April 10th now once you've got all of that information ready to go I'm gonna go back to my script font. I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to drag it and we're going to get the spacing and everything done here in a second because I do not like the way this looks. But We're going to go in and I'm going to change the size about 24 and I want to add a registry. So I'm going to put it registered at Amazon. Amazon is just my go-to. You can do really whatever you want to. It doesn't matter. And then let's start moving these up. I just go to free transform because sometimes with the text it doesn't show you the lines unless you're in free transform and I want to make sure everything is center. We don't want it looking weird. And then add that about right there. Come down here. Move you, bump you up. That looks about right. And then Move that about right there. Okay, so this is just a really simple invitation. I have a lot more invitations that are a lot more in depth. They have a lot more graphics, but I just wanted to show you the basics so that you can start playing around with your editing software, whether it be Photoshop, you could do the same thing in iPicky, you can do it in Canva, you can do it in Inkscape, you can do it in GIMP. I just use Photoshop, I have the Creative Cloud with Adobe because I have four Etsy shops and that takes a lot of graphics, a lot of stuff. And so I just took the time to learn Photoshop as well as I could. And I'm also learning Illustrator. That way I could streamline my design process to where it's not taking me so long to go back and forth through multiple applications to get the, you know, to get results that, you know, I mean, they're good, but I've yet to find anything that beats Adobe. I mean, I'm just going to say that's my personal opinion. Others may feel differently, but for me, Adobe is the way to go when it's coming to graphic designs and things like that. So once you get everything done, you're ready to go, like your invitation, you want to save this as a template. So I'm going to go to save as, and we'll just go to my downloads and we would do, um, SKU001 and the reason why I do that is because once you get 100, 200, 300 listings you're gonna need to know what template goes with what invitation. So what I would do is either enter it in the information on your Etsy listing under your pricing or I've also seen a lot of sellers do it to where they enter the last part of the title is like 001, 002. 
and that way when you get an order you automatically know which Photoshop template to go to without having to search around and then you can just copy and paste their information straight from the personalization tab. That's what I used to do. Now I don't do that any longer. What I actually do is I use Cordial, which is an online software, so I, I do the graphics. I don't add the text on here. I just do all of my designing in Photoshop. I upload it, do my text on Cordial.com, and then when I get an order, the customer gets a link. They go in, they edit, they download, they move it around how they want. They can do whatever they want to with the template once they purchase it. And that just keeps it a little more hands-off for me. One, because I was going back and forth five, six, seven, eight, nine times where I had customers that wanted to adjust it a little bit this way or they didn't like that font quite as much as I thought so they want to go back and it basically just puts the ball in their court they can do whatever they want to with it they can make it how they want it to look and then if they have any issues they're more than welcome to message me and I'll go in and I'll help them but I hope this helped if you have any questions drop them in the comments I'm gonna start doing some more videos of each individual like the digital the digital products that I listed in my first video. I'm going to show you guys how to make all of those. That way you can decide which one you want to go with. You can start getting designs ready for your Etsy shop. I would get at least 10 if you can. You don't have to. I mean you can start an Etsy shop with one listing. That's fine. But I would do at least 10 and then you need to be consistent. So I have 600 listings. It's taken me a year to get that far because I made a lot of changes. But that is what I have in my first invitation shop and it does really well I just hit my first $50 day and that's becoming pretty more consistent $40 $50 a day about seven to ten orders and that has been such a blessing for me but it's taken a lot of time and a lot of effort and I'm just trying to streamline that for you guys so you don't have to make the mistakes that I did you don't have to go through the problems that I I went through and try to figure everything out so I'm gonna be doing more videos on how to make your products how to list them in Etsy good SEO that you need how to find your SEO if you have no clue what you're doing. Also, the difference between an SEO for a listing you want to be ranked with in search, and then you're going to need different SEO. You're actually going to need to copy listings if you're going to use ads because the new Etsy ad system is completely backwards from what it used to be, and so you're not going to just be able to run an ad on a listing that is fluffed with keywords. You're not going to be able to do it. So I hope this helps. Thanks so much for watching and let me know if you want more videos.